Hello, my name is Tesh van Pettinger from Economics Help and today we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of a monopoly. So a pure monopoly is when one firm uh, controls a market, so like a train service between say um, London and Paris, there's only the Eurostar. But if a firm has more than 25% of market share, then they are classified as a legal monopoly. That firm has a, a monopoly power. And there are many examples of this. Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Google, Walmart, Tesco. All these firms are very dominant and that enables them to, to influence the market. So the first big disadvantage of monopolies, uh, something recognized by Adam Smith back in the 18th century, was that monopolies are able to increase prices to gain more consumer surplus from uh, consumers because there's no alternative. If you face a monopoly provider and they put up the prices, then the consumers will pay. So for example, if there's one company delivering water uh, to your house and they put up prices, you have no alternative. Either you pay it or you don't have tap water. So this is allocatively inefficient because if a monopoly is able to raise prices significantly above the marginal cost, then that's a def definition of allocative inefficiency. And it also means that consumers will have less income to spend on other goods and services. So it's not just the consumer who loses out, but other firms who aren't able to get the uh, spending they otherwise would have done. Another potential disadvantage of monopoly is that there may be less incentive for the firm to cut costs, uh, less incentive to develop new products. Because if you have uh, monopoly power, then it's said you can have an easy life, You've got no competitive pressure, and so if a product isn't very good, or if you have inefficient working practices, you can still survive quite easily. Uh, one example, when British Rail had a monopoly on trains, it was often said that the, the food on board, the sandwiches, were very poor, because once you're on a train, you're a captive market. You can't get off and uh, go to a local cafe. Uh, so there was no competition, and the quality wasn't very good as a result. Another problem with monopoly is that it's uh, redistributing income in society towards those who own the monopoly. So for example, turn of the 19th century, there's a few huge monopolies in America, Standard Oil, uh, Rockefeller, um, JP Morgan and the big bank. So these firms were really able to exploit consumers and suppliers. They set higher prices to, for, to consumers and they squeeze the margins of suppliers. And so they made very big profits, but at the expense of the rest of society. And more modern examples, it's been argued big retailers, big dominant firms like Walmart and Amazon, they're able to squeeze the profit margin of other bookshops, of other suppliers. Uh, supermarkets have been criticized for squeezing the farmers' income by paying farmers very low prices. They have monopoly buying power. So it is a problem when firms have monopolies because there'll be much more inequality. Now, although monopolies are often against the public interest, there are times when they can give advantages. The first one is economies of scale. This is when higher output leads to lower average costs. And if you take an industry like building airplanes, there are only two main firms building airplanes in the world, Boeing and Airbus. And the reason there's so few competition is because of such significant economies of scale. The fixed costs are enormous for research and development. So to build a plane from start to finish is in terms of billions of pounds. And it wouldn't be practical to have a perfectly competitive market because small firms simply wouldn't be able to deal with the process of building a modern jumbo jet. So we kind of need to almost have a monopoly because any other situation is not practical. And also if you take something like tap water, it's only practical to have one network of water pipes. It's a natural monopoly. The most efficient number of firms is one. So there's no real alternative. And in that case, we just need to find a way to, to regulate the monopoly. 
so it doesn't abuse the uh, monopoly power that it has. Another very significant advantage of monopolies is the ability to spend on research and development. So higher profit isn't necessarily a bad thing if it is used to invest in new technology uh, new goods and services. And uh, one example could be pharmaceutical companies. Um, they invest a lot of money every year, millions or billions of pounds, developing new treatments, new vaccines. And they can only do this if they have enough profit to take the risk. And their investment won't always pay off, but when it does, the consumer benefits from new drugs which weren't in existence before. And one reason that the pharmaceuticals are willing to invest so much is a prospect of a patent, which is monopoly power for a certain time period. And this, of course, raises another problem that with a patent, they could be in a position to charge high prices and so ill patients aren't able to afford. But it's this uh, balance between the incentive to invest and not exploiting consumers. And if you look at the American healthcare system, um, often the drug companies do charge very high prices because they have monopoly power in that system. Whereas in Europe, there's a greater degree of regulation to avoid the excess of monopoly power. And so prices aren't quite so high, although the drug companies are still profitable. Another argument for monopolies is that you could argue that rather than monopolies becoming inefficient, it's the other way around that firms gain monopoly power precisely because they are efficient. If you look at examples say Google, Google gained so much market share in search engines because people felt it was the best. It was better than its competitors and it was quite innovative and developing new uh, ways to give better results to consumers. And even when a firm has monopoly power, if the structure of a company is correct, there's no reason why they have to become inefficient. If you look at Apple um, and Google, they both have very high monopoly power, but it's, not, it's a far cry from, say, British Rail, where there was um, a lack of investment and lack of dynamism. These companies are developing new products. So it also depends how that company is managed rather than the uh, market structure. Another potential advantage of monopoly is that the most efficient number of firms in a social network is very small because there are many problems with Facebook like abuse of uh, data and uh, uh, privacy issues. But if you're going to join a social network, you really want to join a social network where all your friends are already on. You don't want to have a competitive market where only 10% of your friends are on and you have to join 10 to get you know, net, network to all your friends and business uh, partners. So a market like uh, social media does gravitate towards a monopoly because there's no point having the market fragmented. So there's many examples of uh, good and bad monopolies and it's not clear cut that monopolies are always against the public interest. But if a firm does have very significant monopoly power, there probably needs to be some degree of regulatory oversight to make sure that they don't abuse their uh, monopoly position because this tends to enable us to get the benefits of monopoly, the economies of scale, the investment, without the exploitation of consumers.